Dragons. We hope you had a great long weekend and yesterday you were able to serve somewhere on MLK Day. Uh, today is Tuesday. It's January 18th, 2022. It is the 97th day of school. We're getting closer and closer to the 100th day. Uh, my name is Mr. Butcher. It's my job to keep you safe so that you guys can show us how excellent you can be. Hopefully you've left your average at home or on the bus and you are ready which means being in the right place at the right time at the right stuff to have a respectful which means treating others the way you want to be treated and responsible which means doing your job with a smile on your face and giving perfect effort hopefully you're ready to have a ready respectful and responsible day our first responsibility that we have is to be ready to show respect for the rights that we have in this country we do this by daily saying the pledge of allegiance doing our school pledge as well as doing our moment of silence. If you guys would uh, get ready to stand for the pledge, uh, when we stand for the pledge, we want to stand up, stop what we're doing, stand up tall, put our hands over our hearts like this. We want to say the pledge loudly, clearly, and with pride. If you guys would please stand for the pledge and remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge myself as a Kennedy Dragon to be ready for the day ahead of me. I'll be respectful of myself, my teachers, and all others I meet throughout the day. I promise to be responsible for myself, my actions, and my learning. I'll work my hardest to be the best dragon I can be. Our next responsibility is to try to keep each other safe by slowing down the spread of germs. A great way of doing this is to make sure we frequently wash these hands. When we wash our hands, we want to make sure we're getting all parts of our hands. The palms of our hands, the backs of our hands, our fingertips in between our fingers, our wrists and our thumbs. When we wash our hands, we want to make sure that we are using soap and water. If you cannot get access to soap and water, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer will work. When you wash your hands, you want to make sure that you're doing it for at least 20 seconds. So let's model what good hand washing looks like right now. We want to get the palms of our hands to We want to get the backs of our hands. Five. Get the back of the other hand. Five. We want to get We want to get in between our fingers. Uh, we want to get our fingertips. Our other set of fingertips. Uh, we want to get our thumbs. Our other thumbs. Uh, we want to get our thumbs. And our other thumbs. And our other thumbs. And now your hands should be nice and clean. All right, now that we have washed our hands, we've said our pledge, we've done our moment of silence, let's show respect. Respect is treating others the way you want to be treated. Let's show respect for those that have birthdays today. Happy birthday to Raylan Hang, who is nine years old, and happy birthday to Noah Johnson, who is six years old. We'll make sure you get your birthday. Our responsibility ready. every morning is to make our lunch choice. Remember, responsible means doing your job with a smile on your face and giving perfect effort. And if you're responsible for making your lunch choice, you're gonna choose from barbecue pork sandwich with savory baked beans, creamy coleslaw, fruit slushy and vanilla graham crackers. If you do not want barbecue pork sandwich, you can always get the PB&J or the yogurt and muffin. Hi, I'm Sanai. Hi, uh, I'm From Be The Voice Club. Mr. Bookshare read a book the other day called The Buddy Banks. The kids in the book build a buddy bench to help students not feel alone. Be The Voice Club is working to create two buddy benches on our playground. Soon there will be red signs showing where you can sit if you would like someone to play with you or talk to. Caleb, do you like playing with friends at recess? Yeah. Be the Voice Club wants say, you, to, wants you say, say, to ask say. students sitting on the bench to come play with you. Be kind and help everyone have fun at recess. Say, 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 happy. Thanks for helping. It's now time for our vocabulary and writing activity for the week with our picture of the week. Here's our picture for this week. Remember, we do this so we can improve our vocabulary, the amount of words we know and 
the amount of words we can use in our writing. And we also do it to improve our creative writing. Uh, today is Monday, or today's Tuesday, so we're going to ask you to look for the nouns in this picture. The persons, the places, the things. What do you see? What can you he feel? What can you touch? Tomorrow we'll be asking for verbs, action words. On Thursday, we'll be looking for adjectives and adverbs, those words that describe, and on Friday, prepositional phrases, those words that give a um, relationship between two nouns. So here we go. Right, it's time for our math problem of the week. You guys have one week to work out this problem. There is a kindergarten and first grade one, a second and third grade one, and a fourth and fifth grade one. You can uh, answer them on the whiteboards that you guys have, should have access to. And just put your answers on a sticky note. Make sure you put your name on your sticky note. So here we go. All right, here's the kindergarten and first grade question. There are some cookies on the plate. Six of them are oatmeal, seven are chocolate chip, and three of them are sugar cookies. How many cookies are on the plate? Don't forget, show your work. All right, here is our second and third grade question. Miss Jessica has a goal to run 50 miles this month. She's going to run three miles each day. How many days will it take her to reach her goal? Don't forget, show your work. Put your name on it. And now our fifth grade and fourth grade question. Miss Allen and Miss Hickson go fishing every Friday. Each time, Miss Allen catches four fish and Miss Hickson only catches two. If this continues each Friday, how many Fridays will it take until they've caught 30 fish? Don't forget to show your work. Answer it on the whiteboard. All right, our morning message today is on determination, overcoming mistakes. Listen to these words from one of the first American movie stars. If you have made mistakes, even bad ones, there is always another chance for you. What we call failure is not the falling down, but it's the staying down. If you're feeling down because you've made some mistakes, remember, there's always another chance for you to make a better choice. So don't let your mistakes keep you sad or down. Ask for help. Talk to a parent, a caregiver, a teacher, a faith leader, or a counselor. Then get up, dust yourself off, and just decide to do better next time. With something to think about on Mr. Butcher, make today your masterpiece or not. Remember the choice is yours. And that's so true. So many of you guys just give up because things are hard and you failed. And you're like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, woe is me. And you cry and you whine about it. And then you just don't even try anymore. Don't give up. Dust yourself off and overcome your mistakes. People can make mistakes. Everyone does. I've made at least six mistakes already this morning, but I don't give up. I still push through and get better because you can learn from mistakes. You guys have a great right, day. There are times where you're required to wear a mask, like if you ride the bus or if you are being uh, quarantining at school because you were exposed to COVID. So we wanna make sure that we're wearing our mask the correct way. Make sure it's on over your nose, your mouth, and your chin. Make sure it's tight around your ears so it doesn't fall down. You guys have a great day. That is all we have for announcements, so please help me. Me and your teachers keep you safe. That is our job. And your job is to help us keep you safe. And you can help us by being a ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focused on graduating in the year. Because when you are a ready, respectful, and responsible student focused on graduation, you, you are, are boldly committed to student success. success. I love you very much. Have a great day. Read aloud. Yesterday was Martin Luther King uh, Day. So today's read aloud is going to be a non-fiction book about Martin Luther King. Because we want you to know who the man was that you took the day off for. Um, as I read, I'm going to try to read a uh, model of good readers do, which is to read the words fluently. In this case, I'm going to be reading the words correctly at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow. And then also, too, this is a great time for you to read, uh, at, to practice what good readers do when they are listening or reading a book. When it's a nonfiction book, you're looking for the main idea and the text structure. Uh, there might be pictures or different things like that, and you're trying to find out the supporting details that go with the main idea. The main idea, of course, is going to be the life of Martin Luther King. So this is Martin Luther King Jr. The author is Lola M. Uh, Schaefer. 
and the uh, not the illustrator but the person that's responsible for the photographs is Gail S Saunders Smith so here we go Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Georgia on January 15, 1929. Martin was an African American. His father was a minister of a church. Martin's father taught him to accept all people. So we know Martin Luther King was born in Georgia in 1929. His dad was a pastor. Martin and his family liked people of all races. Not all white people and African American people liked each other. Some people wanted segregation. Segregation separated people because of the color of their skin. So Martin's family liked people of all races, whether they were black or white or brown. Um, they accepted them all, but not everyone wanted that. Some people wanted the black people to be separated from the white people. Martin learned that, from seat, learned that front, front seats on buses were for white people only. Back seats on buses were for African American people only. Martin didn't like segregation. He wanted all people to be treated the same. So based on the color of your skin, you had to sit in a certain spot on the bus. He didn't like that. Do you think you'd like it? No. Martin went to college to become a minister like his dad. He read about strong, peaceful people. These people made changes in their countries. Martin wanted to make peaceful changes for African American people. So Martin wanted to change things. He didn't want it to be segregated. He wanted it to be integrated. Martin became a minister in 1948. Martin met and married Coretta Scott. They moved to Alabama. Martin led a church. He preached that all people should be treated the same. So Martin married a woman named Coretta Scott. They moved to Alabama and he was a preacher. Martin started many groups to help African American people. He knew segregation laws could be changed. He helped African American people plan peaceful meetings. He told them changes would come slowly. So he started some groups to try to make some changes. And those people were peaceful about what they tried to do to help people see things differently. Martin led African American people in peaceful marches. The country watched. He gave powerful speeches. The country listens. Some people liked his ideas. So he gave, he led marches where they went in and kind of marched down the city, walked down the city and he gave lots of speeches and some people liked his ideas. Courts heard cases about segregation laws. The court said segregation was wrong. New laws ended segregation. The laws gave African American people the same rights as white people. The laws said that all people must be treated the same. So because of his marches and because of other things that were going on, they made some laws to change it so everyone had to be treated equal. It didn't matter what color their skin was. Martin Luther King Jr. won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. The prize honored Martin for his peaceful work. Martin died on April 4, 1968. Today, people celebrate Martin Luther King Day in January, just like yesterday. So he won a prize because of his work that he did. And that was Martin Luther King Jr. by Lola M. Schaefer.